So welcome back to another review as read. Today we talk about Imperial Chinese Armies 1840 to 1911 in the Man at Arms series by Offbeat Publishing. This book is basically a description of the Qing army from the Taiping Rebellion to the Fall of the Dynasty and how they evolved, or rather in this case devolved. My big takeaways from the book are firstly how important a plan is as the Qing Dynasty did try to modernize their armies like Japan did. And more than once by the way, but their efforts were hindered for example when they would buy guns and get officers from different countries but apply these to the same units, causing chaos. For example, there is an eyewitness account of how in the Sino-Japanese war with Japan, Chinese troops in the same unit were using different models of guns and ammo with literally power bullets where the soldier would run to and try bullets out on their gun till they found the right ones, discarding the ones that couldn't and causing basically more of a mess. Also corruption is another huge factor for failure in the long run as people are working towards their own goals rather than the common one. Example, a unit of 10,000 men paid by the dynasty was caught for corruption and that in actuality his unit only made up of 800 men. He basically pocketed the rest of their salaries and told the rest of the men to go home on indefinite leave. My last bigger takeaway from the book, how change and adapting is important. As it was this adversity to change that brought disaster to the Qing armies. Foreign officers would comment how Chinese troops would refuse to use new model guns even though they were shown they were more effective. Or for example, how the Qing armies were slow to change their uniforms to modern ones, which the Japanese used to their advantage when they aimed at the big bright patch in the middle of the chest of the Chinese troops. In one battle, one foreign officer commented how out of 24 killed, 20 had chest wounds due to this fact. So we'll do the same thing, we'll go through the pros, cons and the conclusion, so let's get into it. Now the pros of the book are that as always, Osprey's art is beautiful and yet historically accurate. And the book has lots of details for its size. Now on the point of how deep the information is in this book is example for cosplayers as the book actually details at what years did officer markings change on the sleeves, collars, even caps. Thirdly, it gives you an overarching historical story of the state of the Qing and how they failed to modernize and also shows how things were basically falling apart quite quickly. Lastly, books on this topic are way harder to find than say those of the western armies and it is nice to see such a book with such great accuracy and is able to be trusted by a company like Osprey and it's actually not a bad read. Now for the cons, the book does lack the famous maps and campaign maneuvers for the stereotypical Osprey book. But then again, this is not really Osprey's fault as this is their Man Arms series. But just for the uninitiated, do take note that this book does not have those maps and campaign maneuvers. Second, there is one point of the layer of this book where the evolution of the Chinese troops are shown in pictures but a lot of the details are put at the back of the book. So if you were to read and want to look at the pictures at the same time, you would have to read the summary and then flip back to the picture and you have to keep doing this for several pictures. So in conclusion, it is a good read. I can't say I was blown away by it but I definitely can say that I did learn a lot from a less known topic in Empire. So that is Chinese Armies 1840 to 1911 from Osprey Publishing. If you like more content like this, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. Thank you very much. Till next word.